soft. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it, was a, it was more spirited practice today. So I thought we got some good work in. Uh, guys enjoyed themselves. I thought we got better. And overall, it was, it was pretty good. Did you, did you said you wanted to maybe dial it back physically, though. Did that help, do you think, taking off some of the, or did you do that? Today? Yeah, we, we, we did. We, 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 they were ready to go. They, uh, we, we posted it, and I walked into the team meeting, and they were ready to go. I had full pads on, ready to go. So, uh, so uh, but no, we ended up taking them off. Quit lighter. So you were gonna you were gonna go light, but they actually did have all their. They had it. They were ready to go today, but uh, no, we went lighter. Yeah, we did. Coach, I've been a part of some rainy practices, and they usually kind of pick the energy up, a lot of fun. Is that kind of part of why you decided? Yeah, it to worked out pretty them? good today, really, because uh, when we first went out there, there was nothing, and then it was very light, and then during the last twenty minutes, it started coming down pretty heavy. But that was good for us to work in the rain and work a wet ball and, and all that. So uh, we still got the looks we needed. How'd they look in the rain? Look fine. Look good. Yeah, didn't seem to slow them up too much. How you uh, doing the snaps with the quarterbacks? How you piled that up? Uh, Maxwell's getting the majority of it. The unmajority was getting the <laughs> 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 uh, Sorry, man. That's all right. I'll, 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 let us look at it for another day or so. I'll probably tell you here before, prior to the game, where we're at with that. So is that a conversation? As far as who would be the backup. Well, it's also determined. It's going to be determined by how how hurt Jalen is for the backup. If it's going to be one game, we don't want either of those backup quarterbacks to play. So we'd like to redshirt both of them, you know. But Patrick sacrificed a little more in that he's the sophomore and he, you know, wanted to take that redshirt. So um, I think we got to be conscious of that as well. So we're we're just looking at the best option. And, and, either, and either of the guys would do whatever we need. You look at it as far as, do you look at it as far as how deep you are into the season? Does it play a part into it too? Well, no, I think we would first go with the best option to win. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then, uh, you know, it may be determined what, what time of the game it happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If it was the fourth quarter, if it was one way or the other, right. the game was determined, you know, you're going to take a red shirt off somebody. If Jalen was maybe ready the next work, week, mm -hmm. that would be hard to do as well. So right. there, there's some factors. Uh, that play into it, like I said, because we'd like to redshirt both of the backup right. quarterbacks. Do you have a, so. a one-week contingency plan where you maybe get a wildcat guy or somebody else ready to go if you if no, there's a stop No, we'll go, we'll go one of those guys, and they'll be ready to go, and they're, they're willing to do it. When you said be conscious of Patrick, is that just that, that he really wanted to try to redshirt this well, year? Well, of to course, not, you know, yeah. Once, once uh, we turn him, told him where, where he was at, then, of course, he wanted to redshirt and get that year back from last year. And him being one year older, um, but yeah, you got to be a little bit uh, conscious of, of where he's at and, and what he'd like to do. But uh, on the same hand, if he's going to get an opportunity to truly be the starting quarterback and, and play, he's he's ready to go. Like I said, both of them are very unselfish. If we called him and said you're in for four snaps and blew the red shirt year, they'd do it. I understand you said I understand you said that you have more injuries on this particular team than any team you've ever been associated with. Did, Did I say that? I don't remember. I'm, I'm, uh, are you going to say that? I don't remember saying that. But there I, thought was I, read quite it, a, I did say that you probably caught a, a clip the other day. I did say there was quite a few guys on the injury report. Now, some of that's very minor, and they're just on there getting treated because they're beat up and some of them are injured. So, yeah. So we're, we're getting better. Yeah. Mark, when you, in the past, when you've had maybe a kid that you thought, and he thought he was going to redshirt, and then for whatever reason, early in the season or maybe even mid-season, yeah. you have to pull that redshirt off him. Is it a mental adjustment for that kid? Yeah, Is he in one mindset, and then he has to change to yeah, another? Yeah, I believe it does. I believe it does. Uh, you know, Patrick's been, uh, you know, prior to this week, you know, he's been down there on, on the scout team helping us, and just that, that helps him get good looks and throw the ball and stay active, and it helps us. So, yes, it does change a little bit mentally. Beyond, beyond the quarterbacks, are there guys on the scout team or that you're playing the retro that stood out to you this season that can help down the road? Yeah, I do. I feel good about that nucleus of guys. I really do. That uh, they, they've got a great work ethic. They're getting extra lifting, so they're on a different lifting plan than the guys that are playing, and they're they're hitting the weights much harder. And uh, I think that's really going to pay off. Coach, for an extensive injury list, the guys that are filling in their replacements and getting those extra snaps during five week. Have you seen a lot of those guys step up and embrace that role? I have, yeah. I, I see guys getting better, and, and that's where that fine line comes in. Like today, I wanted to go very long, very hard practice. I backed off a little bit just to continue to develop our team. And uh, 
tomorrow. We will. We'll have a, a, another good long physical practice tomorrow and, and develop uh, develop everybody. We need, we need to get better. We said that in the off season. We need to, I mean, in the off week to, to heal up a little bit mentally, physically, uh, prepare for Mississippi State, and also just get better as a football team. What do you think flipped the switch for you guys from from yesterday, saying emotionally down to today, guys ready to roll? Did you, I, I was just, there a team meeting or anything? Did the no, guys no, there was nothing. There was nothing drastic yesterday. It was just like you would expect. They were off Sunday and Monday, tough stretch. They were just uh, uh, they needed a little gas in the tank. You know, they were just a little down. I mean, they, we got work done, and, and it wasn't a bad attitude or anything like that. It was just emotionally we were a little down, and we we're. 11 games away, or 11 days away, or 9 days away, whatever it was at that time. And uh, so I think today uh, they just came out with a good attitude, a little bit refreshed, and got some good work. Do you, do you see any individual guys sort of lead that charge in terms of to getting everybody up again? No, I didn't. I came down to the team meeting, and they had some real good loud music going on, and it was nice and loud, and everybody was, was excited. So that, that put me in a good mood. Did you dance <laughs> you know, or so, anything? No, no, no. <laughs> No, no, no good clips of that. What do you still need from your left guard that you guys aren't getting? Uh, just uh, consistency, physical play. Just there's a combination of things. You know, you know how it is in this league. I mean, you know, it takes a lot of talent. I mean, the, the bigger and the more physical you are, and the more athletic you are, generally you have a better chance against some of these teams. But uh, uh, you know, so we'll continue to work. Are you? Are you almost playing that position situationally? Because you've got, you know, Tevin, who's a bigger, wider body. Tevin maybe. played better than he had last week. You know, so, uh, so that was a good sign. So we're, we're, we're working a lot of options. Yeah. Best of everyone. How did you guys find Nate Willis? Like, how did he sort of get on your radar? It's just junior college lists. We were just watching a bunch of junior college corners and uh, liked what we had to see and we started improving from that. Now that you've seen your, speaking of that, your talent level, what you have here, Knowing that even with a good freshman class, a lot of freshmen aren't really ready to play necessarily in this league. Have you reevaluated whether you need to go grab some other JUCO guys to help next year? I think there's always a place for, for junior college players to, to fill some holes. Uh, as I said, I believe you know um, you, could, you guys can go back and look at it. But whatever I said in the first media, in the first introductory media conference, I think you need junior college players. We will recruit junior college players. I don't think it's necessarily a great thing to go recruit eight or nine because you, the turnover is so quick. You know, by the time you get them right in your system, playing how you want to play, then, then they're gone. You know, so uh, they've been very good for us, and uh, uh, we've had great success. Whether it be at my previous stops and here, they're working out good, and I uh, like having them. It's just that number. I hate to put a figure on that. You know, uh, some some years it may be more than others, but. After that long-winded question, you know, we do need some junior college players. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you got hit, got me, got me. Talking. At the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we do. We need we need some help in certain positions. You yeah. mentioned on Monday, I think on your radio show, that you might have seven, eight, or nine guys who are going to graduate early, so you might be able to bring in more people. Yeah. When did you realize that you were going to have that, and and are you going to start filling those gaps? Like, we're going to have no problem filling those gaps, whether in, you know, I'm not allowed to talk about specific people, but, um, but uh, whether it be high school mid-year guys or junior college mid-year guys, we, we, should, we, we should be have the opportunity to fill some spots. So seven to nine of those guys? Uh, possibly, depending on how our kids do academically, which is a good thing, uh, we could get up to 11. Folks, thank you very much. Yep. We'll, uh, thanks. Yep.